we left the last lecture with a very interesting problem so we had created a set called i and it had all uh, uh, real numbers so x was real in the set such that uh, x was uh, greater than equal to 0 or let me change the numbers this time so x was greater than uh, 5 and x was less than equal to 10 so we left with a very similar set and we saw that we could not express is uh, express it as a list of numbers as we are used to doing in the set roster form so i could not start listing the numbers maybe i start from 10 because 5 is not in the set so maybe i go in descending order so the next element in the set was unknown whatever is next to 10 whatever real number occurs next to 10 on the number line that is on the left of 10 in our case so we didn't know how to list the set number by number so we said that it, it called for a specific notation or something new some new structure but still it should be some subset of r because we understand uh, geometrically that this is a subset of r in fact we plotted this subset on the number line so this was this subset this whole shaded region and 10 was included so i included this with a shaded circle and 5 was excluded so i depicted it this way with an empty circle well i need a symbolic depiction for the set so let me define something called the intervals that's why i named it i for intervals so let me define something called the intervals so an interval a comma b is some subset of r a comma b is a subset of r such that or let me put the subset of r condition inside the definition itself so a comma b is equal to a set i am giving it in the set builder form x belongs to r such that x is greater than equal to a and x is less than equal to b and i denote it by this notation these uh, square brackets denote that a and b are included so uh, we we have other notations for when a and b are not included but for now let us consider this case well uh, this actually is a, a multiple condition uh, property right x belongs to r is a property and x has to be greater than or equal to a as well as it has to be less than or equal to b so in a number line if we plot it maybe this is a and this is b and just for uh, uh, the sake of it let me let me say zero is here maybe a is negative and b is positive so the way i have uh, i have defined this set a comma b is that a is included b is also included and all the numbers in between a and b all the numbers you could think of all the numbers that are real and they are between a and b are included so now we have because we have defined a new structure let us see some more uh, let us get used to the structure first so what if i say uh, i have a set such that uh, 2 comma 5 what will this constitute well i know that it is a set with all elements from r x belongs to r says that x is greater than or equal to 2 and x is less than or equal to 5 and in a lot of books you will see this condition combined into a single one but it actually means the same thing so this can be written as x is greater than or equal to 2 and less than or equal to 5 it is written this way but this can be broken up into two conditions with and operator and one should also realize that this itself is uh, a compound statement it means x is greater than a or x is, x is equal to a so anyway now this set is looks something like this so x lies between 2 and 5 and 2 and 5 are included so if i had to plot it on a number line it will be some something like uh, in some places we draw the uh, line depicting the interval above the number line to just to be 
this is differentiated from the number line itself so i am shading in the circles it is representing 2 and 5 and all the numbers in between has to be included so this is a geometric representation and this is how we write it symbolically okay so what if i was so this was example 1 maybe so example 2 what if i had an interval of this form uh, 10 comma 10 no one said that i couldn't take this interval because i i did not pose any condition in my definition that a and b have to be distinct or a less than b or anything so a and b are just real numbers from here a comma b belongs to real right uh, so what will this interval look like this is the set of all x's that belong to r such that x is less than equal to 10 and x is greater than equal to i'll maybe color code the two tens so this is the yellow 10 i'm talking about well, both are the same but i have color coded it so i can differentiate the two conditions so x has to be less than or equal to 10 so this is or and this is or two or statements and they are combined by an and statement so the only number that satisfy this criteria if you pause the video and ponder upon it only uh, only number that satisfies this criteria is x is equal to 10 so x is equal to 10 is the only real number that will belong to the set so i'll say that my 10 comma 10 is the same as 10 in this case case we could actually list the interval given to us so singletons are intervals this is a singleton right it's a single element set so singletons are intervals according to me according to my definition singletons are also intervals well what something else is also an interval which would be given by example 3 uh, i say that i have an interval maybe of this form uh, 7 comma 2 again I, in the definition i never said that a has to be less than b so let us just see what this interval would look like 7 comma 2 so this is all x belong to belonging to r such that x is greater than or equal to 7 as well as and x is less than or equal to 2 remember both the criteria both the conditions have to be satisfied simultaneously so just go through a number line maybe so what am i talking about right here i want all the numbers which are also greater than and equal to 7 greater than or equal to 7 and as well as they should be less than or equal to 2 so there are no such numbers these both are disjoint sets right so there are no such numbers so i will say that 7 comma 2 the interval is a null set it's an empty set right so empty set and null set and whatever you want to call it is also an interval according to this definition so now we know what are all intervals empty set is an interval singleton is an interval and any other interval of course a comma b is an interval and what if i i wanted a notation for something like this just uh, if if a were less than x and x were less than or equal to b well i would put a different brackets on it that's to differentiate so b is included so i put a square bracket but when i have to say that a just the number a is not included i'll put a uh, normal uh, braces wh whatever you, round brackets or whatever you call them i'll put this bracket to denote it so uh, i think you all can guess now what will this look like a is less than or equal to x and less than b what will this look like and what will uh, x in r such that a is less than x is less than b would look like so i'm pretty sure you are smart enough to guess this so this a is included and b is not so b is uh, i i put a round bracket and a comma b both are not included so i ag again put a round bracket on both of the uh, both of the numbers so this indicates i'll i'll just draw a diagrammatic representation for this 
so this indicates uh, a comma b on the number line and all the numbers in between a comma b i'll use a highlighter tool just because i have it so all these numbers but a and b aren't included in my set so a and b are excluded all the other points so if i had to say uh, 1 comma 2 so this set would contain all the numbers that are greater than 1 and less than 2 so 1.000000 how many of zeros you want and then you put up one there this will be in my set and similarly 1.9999 how many ever times you want and uh, unless it is finite this will be still in my set right all these will so i'll not say this is equal to this i'll say that this is a subset of the interval 1 comma 2 and what 1 comma 2 actually contains can be represented by a number line again where 1 is not included 2 is not included and all in between are included okay so now we have ways of representing all the intervals we can think of and uh, when it comes to terminologies i am not a big fan but anyway this is called a closed interval this is called a closed interval because a and b uh, they are kind of closed they uh, they they are like gates guarding other other numbers inside so a and b are contained in my set so this is called a closed interval the meaning of closed might be somewhat ambiguous here but that's the way it is for now soon you might understand why it is called called closed and this is called an open interval where a and b are not included the end points are not included so the circle is uh, o kind of open also while in my depiction and these are called semi open or semi closed or whatever bullshit people call it but uh, the main main motto was to say that open and closed mean uh, the endpoints are excluded or included respectively right so now since i've discussed about open and closeness of intervals i'll i'll discuss about something called uh, an an open interval that goes on forever in some direction so what i mean by that is i want to represent all x's belonging to r such that x is greater than or equal to 5 that's the only condition uh, condition i'm giving you so what will be contained in the interval this will have 5 over here and all the numbers that are greater than or equal to 5 also will be contained in the interval right and these are all the numbers that are contained in the interval so you can see that there's no end 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 point for that interval if you give me any number uh, gi given in the any number from the interval i can give you a next number that is greater than this given number which is also contained in the interval so if one gives me say k belonging to this interval a for now so if k belongs to a then k plus 1 will also belong to a k plus 1 is just any other number that is greater than k so essentially i am discussing the idea of an, uh, something called the infinity so how do we represent this interval well this is just just a representation so this is represented as phi comma this symbol for infinity and phi is included and this does not mean that infinity is excluded or included this this whole thing should be read as one symbol representing this very idea that all the numbers greater than or equal to 5 are there in the interval so there's nothing called infinity belongs to this or infinity does not belong to this it's just a notation i hope you understand the subtle differences i'm giving you okay so what if i had it the other way around maybe x was an r and x is less than equal to or this time i'll take less than minus 2 so how do i represent this well i put a negative infinity symbol over here indicating that all numbers however small they may be has to be included in the interval but only up till negative 2 and negative 2 has to be excluded so i put a open brackets over here the round brackets 
this is minus 2 okay so finally i'll leave you with a with one idea uh, i said that intervals were subsets of subsets of r's but we know that r itself is a subset of r so r also is a subset of r remember if subsets are proper subsets then i would uh, use this symbol for proper subsets denoting that it is not an improper subset it is not equal to a is not equal to b so this according to me is any subset maybe proper or improper this is not a symbol for proper subsets like in some places you can see this just makes things easier for me when uh, to, when i have to write it down so r itself is a subset of r so how do you represent r as an interval because r has kind of all the properties of intervals right whatever property intervals had the uh, whatever two numbers you take in the interval everything in between should have to be in that interval so that's essentially the property we are working with uh, so r has to be represented as an interval so how do we do that well i just say minus infinity to infinity is the notation for r that's it so this way i could define r and and in the number line how will it look like these are all the real numbers there can be so all these real numbers well how do i write it in the set notation this is just x belongs to r that's it there are no conditions placed on what elements so these are just all the elements all real numbers and this is the notation again this is the notation one should not think that everything that lies between minus infinity and infinity and infinity is being excluded all that should not come to your mind it's just the notation given for r that's it so i hope you understood we'll do uh, a lot of applications of these as we keep on studying chapters like linear inequalities or maybe trigonometry and everywhere in mathematics we'd like to express the uh, intervals in in these fashion thank you for now